Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Module. This is Lesson 16, Symmetry. Okay, so the classwork opening exercise says give an example of two opposite numbers and describe where the numbers are, lie on the number line. Okay, where are they on the number line? How are opposite numbers similar? How are they different? So there's a bunch of things going on here. We need to answer all these questions. So I'm just going to pick a number. How about 3 and negative 3? Two opposite numbers done. Describe where the numbers lie on the number line. Okay, I would say... Number three is three units to the right of zero. Negative three is three units to the left of zero, okay? So I describe where they are in the number line. How are opposite numbers similar? Absolute number, opposite numbers have the same absolute value, which means distance from zero. Three is three units from zero. Negative three is three units to zero from zero. How do they differ? How are they different? Um, their direction from zero. So one is positive and one is negative. on example one okay so this says extending opposite numbers to the coordinate plane extending opposite numbers to the coordinates of points on the coordinate plane locate and label your points on the coordinate plane to the right okay, so let's do this first so this first point we're given three four which means this is x this is y X is your horizontal axis, X, and Y is your vertical axis, Y. Three positive means go to the right three, positive three. And on a vertical number line, positive is up. One, two, three, four. So the point three, four is right here. And I would label that three. It then says to also graph negative three, which means negative three on the X is left three. Positive 4 on the y is up 4. This is the point negative 3, 4. So I located and labeled the points on the coordinate plane to the right. Located and labeled. For each given pair of points in the table below, record your observations and conjectures in the appropriate cell. Pay attention to the absolute values of the coordinates and where the points lie in reference to each axis. So rather than write this in, it's a lot to write. It's hard to write here and fit everything. So I'm just going to copy it in and Okay, so these have the same y coordinates. Four is equal to four. The x coordinates have the same absolute value. Absolute value of three is three. Absolute value of negative three is three. The differences are the x coordinates are opposite. Okay, now we're going to do 3, 4, and 3, negative 4, so I'll change colors. I'll do this one in green. So this is X, and this is Y again, just to remind you. Right 3, up 4, so what we're doing is we're using the same starting point. And then 3, negative 4 means to go right 3 on the X axis and down 4 on the Y, so it would be here. So that'd be 3, comma, negative 4. And now I need to bring in the similarities and differences. 
So if you, okay, so this one has the same x coordinates, 3 and 3 are the same, and the y coordinates have the same absolute value. Positive 4 and negative 4 both have an absolute value of positive 4. The differences are the y coordinates are opposites. So in this case, it was x, and over here, the y's are opposites. Those are the differences. Okay, next number, or ordered pair, is going to be 3, 4 again. So we're starting here, and then it says negative 3 on the x-axis means left 3, and negative 4 means down 4. So this is the point, negative 3, negative 4. Okay, and now the similarities. Okay, the x-coordinates have the same absolute value. Negative 3, positive 3, both have an absolute value of 3. The y-coordinates have the same absolute value, 4 and negative 4. Both the x and y-coordinates are opposite numbers. So the difference is both the x and the y's are opposite, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 4. Okay, so unfortunately, the way they split this up, we're on a new page. We have to keep flipping back and forth. Hopefully they address the formatting of these modules in future years. But for now, we have to do with what we have. And rather than going back and forth, I'm just going to bring these in. And if you need to, pause to copy these down to so. Okay, so here's a novel idea. Uh, so limit similarities in location. Both points are four units above the x-axis and three units away from the y-axis. Okay, and we're going to continue on here. Now, notice these are quite lengthy. Um, so I guess they expected you to copy all of this down in your small little square given in your notebook or in your module. Um, but if you want to take the time and read those, I'm not going to read through all of these. Again, like I said, pause the video. And these are the similarities and differences in the relationship to these points. Okay, so on to this exercise. It says in each column, write the coordinates of the points that are related to the given point by the criteria listed in the first column of the table. Point S, 5, 3, has been reflected over the X and Y axis for you as a guide, and its images are shown on the coordinate plane. Use the coordinate grid to help you locate each point and its corresponding coordinates. Okay, so let's tackle this now. It basically gives you examples as to what the prior similarities and differences state. So we're given the point is reflected across the x-axis. So the given point is s, which is 5, 3. So we go over 5, up 3, and there's our x. It said the given point is reflected across the x-axis. The x-axis is here. Reflecting it across the x-axis, we put it down here, and that is m. And m is 5, comma, negative. The given point is reflected across the y-axis. Here's y. Take s, reflect across y, and we end up at l, which is negative 5, comma, 3. Left 5, up 3. Then it says the given point, 5, 3, right here, is reflected first. Let me erase this. Start fresh. It's reflected first across the x-axis. So I reflect across the x-axis and end up at M. And then across the y-axis. So then when I take M and reflect it across the y-axis, I end up at A. And A is the point negative 5, negative 3. Okay. Now it says, erase this again. Now it says the given point S is reflected first across y to l and then across x to a so that is the point negative five negative three so if we go from s to m to a that is clockwise to reflections and then if i go from s to l to a that's counterclockwise across y then across x to a we end up at the same finish point so what we're really doing is going 180 degrees rotation or reflection across the origin. Okay. So this is the same distance. As this. Okay. So our last two are always going to be the same is what I'm trying to get. 
So now we're going to take the point negative 2, 4. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 is right here. Okay, and how about I call this P. So I'm going to call that P. Reflect it across the X axis. We'll put P over. Okay, well, what happened when we reflect across the X axis? So we're not going to have to graph these to finish. But I will this one and that's it. So P is negative 2, 4. I reflect it across the X axis, not the Y, I drew Y. Reflect it across the X axis will put me down here at negative 2, negative 4, and I could call that Q. So Q is negative 2, comma, negative 4. So what happened here? 5 stayed the same, the X stayed the same, the Y changed signs. X stayed the same, Y changed signs. Okay? So now that we see a pattern, we can just continue that. X stays the same, Y changed signs. X stayed the same, Y changed signs. Okay. And I'm going to continue now. We erase this. Leave Q. Uh, try to leave Q there. Get that line. Q back. Okay. So then it says the given point reflected across the Y axis. So I have to go over here too, over two more, and that would be here. And I'll call that R. So that's R, and that is the point 2, comma, 4. So from 5, 3 to negative 5, 3, the X changed signs, the Y stayed the same. Negative 2 went to positive 2, 4 went stayed with 4. So this is going to be negative 3, comma, negative 2. And this negative 1 is going to change to positive, and negative 5 is going to stay Now, if I continue with this one, it says take the given point P, reflect it first across the X axis, which will put me at Q. Then take that and reflect it across the Y, which is over 2 and over 2 more. And I will call that T. So that will be the point P. And that is the location 2, comma, negative 4. Now we see a pattern. 5 went to negative 5, 3 went to negative 3. So when I reflect twice, we changed the sign of both x and y. Negative 2 went to positive 2, 4 went to negative 4. 3 is going to become negative, negative 2 is going to become positive, negative 1 is going to become positive, negative 5 is going to become positive. And as we saw here, it's going to be t again. Going the other direction is going to be the same. And we're going to end up at the same location as the other one. So this will be negative 3, 2. And this will be negative 1, 5. Okay. When the coordinates of two points are x, y, and negative x, comma, y, what line of symmetry do the points share? So if this is x, comma, y, if I look at my coordinate plane again, it's positive going this way. And then positive going up here, so I'm up here somewhere. Okay, so I'm in quadrant one, which we're going to get to. So if I go to negative x, in other words, left on the x axis, and then positive y, I would end up over here in quadrant two. So I, a reflection across the y axis. So what line of symmetry do the points share? the y axis because the x value not an x coordinate I'll call it the x coordinate changed signs And the y coordinate stay the same. Okay. 
Next question. When the coordinates of two points are x, y, again, x, y, positive, positive, I'm over here. And then we go to positive x, negative y, we're down here. That's reflecting across the x axis. So So it says, what line of symmetry do the points share? Or the points share the x-axis as a line of symmetry. I'm just saving time for my writing on that, but it should be written in complete sentences. Then it says to explain. And then I would say, because the x-coordinate stay the same. meaning we just went to the right for both of them. Okay, the x coordinate stayed the same. And the y coordinate change signs. Meaning it went from positive to negative, it went from going up to going down. So we're on the other side of the x axis. Okay, so navigating the coordinate plane. So the coordinate plane is here. So let's just talk about this a little bit. Let me change my view just a bit. Let's zoom to 100%. Okay, so here's our coordinate plane. I always like to label my axes. There's X and there's Y. Always label the X on the right and the Y at the top. You don't put an X over here or a Y down here. It's always top and Okay. And then what quadrants are we in? Well, this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two using Roman numerals. This is quadrant three. And this is quadrant four. So we go counterclockwise starting top bar. So up until fifth grade, all we dealt with were positive numbers. Positive on the x-axis, positive on the y is quadrant. So these are positive, comma, positive. Over here, we went left on the x-axis, which is negative values. We still went up, so that's positive. Okay? And then right next to the so right side, negative, and then positive. Okay? Down here, we went to the left, which is negative, and we went down, which is negative. And then over here, we went to the right for x, which is positive, we went down for y, which is negative. So plus positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative. One, two, three, clockwise. I explained, or counterclockwise. And I explained in class why that is, and it has to do with the unit circle and angles and how they open in the direction they open to increase the angle of the measures. But I won't do that. That's the end of lesson 16. Go do your problem set.